Now, three SI units have also been discussed in the first chapter, and these are the meter for distance, grams for the weight, and liters for volume. Now, of course, the problem with having one unit, only single unit for distance, is that we want to measure very small distances to very large distances using the same unit. So, whereas the meter is fixed, right? So one meter is, is a fixed length. So if, if I have to measure, let's say, the distance between Earth and the Moon using this fixed length, I'll need lot of such meters. So what we do, right? So the numbers that I come up with will be, will be in meters would be very, very large. So what we do, or what the SI system, what they have decided to do is that they take this meter, this unit, and they call it base unit. So this is right here. Then they, what they do is that in some cases, they combine many such meters. So dig, 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 dig. They'll combine many such meters and they form larger units. So if I combine 10 such meters, I get a decameter. If I combine 100 such meters, I get a hectometer. And if I combine 1000 such meters, I get a kilometer. So as you could guess, very large distances like distance between cities are very convenient if we measure them in kilometers. Whereas in meters, it would be like very large numbers. You'll come up with very large numbers. Similarly, to measure small distances, very tiny distances, what the scientists, right? They're very smart. So what they did was they took this unit meter, it's a fixed distance, and then they cut it into parts. Cut, 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 cut. They'll cut it into 10 parts, and they call one such part a decimeter. They'll cut it into 100 parts, cut, 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 cut. And one such very small part would be called a centimeter. And similarly, when the same unit, the same base unit is cut into very tiny pieces, thousand pieces, then one such small, small part is called a millimeter. As you could have guessed, this millimeter is very small. So I could use this to measure very small distances, right? So for example, this pen is three millimeters, right? I can measure it using millimeter because one millimeter is very small. I put three of these next to this and it will be three millimeters. So let's take an example, right? This is a question from your book. Centimeters, how many centimeters make a kilometer? So very simple. I go from here, right? From the top I start. So in one kilometer, there are 10 hectometers. In one hectometer, there are again 10 decameters. Similarly, there are in one decameter, there are 10 meters. So from kilometer to meter when I go, I get thousand, a factor of thousand. So there are thousand meters in one kilometer. Similarly, if I go down from meters to, not millimeters, sorry, from meters to centimeters, right? So don't read this arrow. I go down from meters to centimeters, I get a factor of hundred. So there are hundred centimeters in one meter. So if I, if I combine these two, right? So kilometer, how many there would be? Thousand first. There are 1000 meters in one kilometer and each of those meters has 100 centimeters. So 1000 into 100, which means this is the number I come up with. And again, like we discussed in the previously, we should definitely try to put some commas here so that it becomes easier. And I come up with my answer, which is one lakh. This is another example. There are total of 2 lakh, right? See, comma makes it so easy. 2 lakh medicine tablets, each weigh 20 mg. So what is the total weight in mg, right? This is in milligrams, right? So there is a factor of m here. Again, the for gram also, we are using the same things. We are using the same. These are known as prefixes. We are using the same prefixes. mg. So first I do the multiplication. So I get 2 to the 4. And then what is the number of zeros I'll get? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would come from here. And then one would come from here. So these are the number of zeros I get. Again, I put commas. Then I want to really convert them into kilograms. It's already given. So kilogram, remember, is very large. The unit itself is very large. So very few of those would be required to denote the same weight. So weight remains the same. It is this much mg. This is the weight. Weight remains the same. But since my unit kilogram is very large, I need few of those. How few of those? Again, the factor that we got from the last time, it remains the same. So I go from kilogram to gram itself. I get a factor of 
thousand, and then from gram to milligram again I get a factor of thousand. So this is how big a kilogram is when compared to mil milligram, right? So kilogram is several times more, this much times more. So I cut the zeros, very very easy. Three zeros go from here, and then three zeros I cut here, and then three zeros go here. One, two, and three. So I am left with four kilogram. Very simple. If you approach the problem systematically, there is no trouble at all. Here again, very simple question. The speed of the bus is 60 km per hour, which means it is covering 60 kilometers in one hour. If it runs for one hour, it will cover 60 kilometers. The distance is unfortunately, or, or actually fortunately for your teacher, it is given in meters. So I first need to convert it to kilometers. How do I do it? I know that kilometer is thousand times larger than meter. So I would need fewer number, right? I need fewer kilometers to cover the same distance. So I divide by 1000 because that is the factor between meter and kilometer. It is 1000 times smaller meter is 1000 times smaller. So I divide it by 1000 and I cut the zeros and this is what I get. It's 2160 kilometer. Now, of course, <coughs> it is covering in one hour. How much? 60. That is the what, what the bus is covering. So how, how many hours would it would it take to cover this much distance? I divide by 60 and the answer comes out to be 36 hours very very simple